Hello everyone, and welcome to In the Greenhouse with Logan Keister. I'm your host, Logan Keister. So today I thought I'd talk a little bit about how to propagate rosemary. And this technique I'm going to show you is not only able to work for rosemary, but it works for a lot of other things that we might want to take cuttings of. For instance, in front of me, I have cuttings of Ulithero, uh cuttings of uh, elderberry, and cuttings of Coscara. We're going to be booing a lot more cuttings. So right now I'm sitting in this bed full of sand. So it's pretty much the medium I'm sitting on, just sand, and it's buried up a few inches, like probably about half a foot. And this is where I'm going to be sticking all my rosemary cuttings. So to take rosemary cuttings, basically I was out there and I was just trimming back this big rosemary bush that was starting to grow in front of the doorway and it was getting kind of in the way and it had all this like really beautiful, nice, fresh growth. And some of it wasn't looking so nice. So that stuff I just kind of placed aside and I just went and looked through and just got all my really nice material. So stuff like this is just nice, fresh growth, no diseased or dying material on it, no flowers. This is primo material right here. And so to do this, essentially what I do is I take my snips, you get your snips, and you're gonna do four nodes. So each, you notice how each of these little leaves, it goes like here's a cluster of leaves, next one, next one, next one. You're gonna count to four, so one, two, three, four, and count cut just below them. So you can see they're opposite leaves. So each one will have like two leaves opposite each other. So I got my four nodes. One, two, here, let's see. See that? One, two, three, and four. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip off the bottom two leaves. And then I'm going to take my fingernail. And I'm just going to carry, take off a little bit of the cambium layer on the outside to reveal this night, a little bit of that little green, but I don't want to cut too deep. So right there, that's a good cutting. And I'm just going to continue going down this stalk and just cutting uh, down uh, four nodes each time till I get to the bottom and just keep going on like that. So once you got your little cutting, in here I have a bucket and I put in about a gallon of water with uh, about a teaspoon of this kelp powder. This kelp powder is really strong, so it didn't take much. You can see the water's all dark and murky. Woo! <laughs> you can't see that much. <laughs> so once I get my cutting, I'm just gonna drop it in the bucket. So in here I just have a whole bunch of like rosemary cuttings that have just been floating in this nice kelp water. So the kelp water is really good because it has its own natural root growth hormone. So it really gets the roots going early. So I've had this stuff sitting in here for about 15 minutes to half an hour. It doesn't really matter how long, you know, I mean, you don't want to keep it multiple days, but you, you can with certain things that actually does help. You can just have it sit in the water and the kelp water is good for that. So I got my soaked little rosemary cutting got two on the top, none on the bottom, a little bit of cambium layer scratched off. Then I'm just going to sit, simply just stick this right in the sand and I'm going to bury it right up to right where the leaves are. It's going to be buried right up there in, into sand. And I'm just going to go down the line like that. And after this, essentially I'm going to use this plastic covering and I'm going to pull it over my sand pit. And the best way to do it is to have like frequent light misting throughout the day. Because ideally you'd want to have dry sand below and just enough mist on the top to stop the leaves from transpiring too much so it doesn't dehydrate. But it's dry down there so it encourages the roots to grow because it's going to want to look for water. However, in this instance we are doing watering every once in a while. We'll do just a light watering put over the plastic and it creates this nice little humid environment that tops, stops it from the 
stops from transpiring too much and dehydrating, but still keeps the soil dry enough that it's not going to cause the cuttings to rot or it to like the roots. Uh, it kind of helps the roots to grow more when it's a little dry because they're going to be like, oh, where's water? We got to grow. Look for water. It's just that natural instinct that the plant has. So, like I said, you can do this with other cuttings. Like we did, I did the same exact thing with my elderberry stalks. So I have stalks of elderberry here. And as you can see, it's a more of a woody cutting, but it's the same thing, like two nodes up, two nodes down, and then you stick it. And typically when you're doing things, if you have something that has leaf, a lot of leaf growth on top, it's better to have less leaves, like just have like a couple leaves. Um, you know, that's why I was just saving a little bit because if there's a lot of leaves, it actually causes it to transpire a lot more and then it can cause the cutting to dry out and desiccate. So, and also a good time to gather your cuttings is like right now. So right now I'm gathering in December, in the middle of December. So this is when most things are going dormant. So all of these woody tree species, my things like my Ulithro, my uh, Coscara, our elderberry and this rosemary have all finished their flowering and their seeding cycle and it's getting frosty out and they're all going dormant and this is the best time to gather material because this stuff will just be sitting in here and over you know can be up to a few months it'll start to develop roots and then from there you can just stick them in your pots and treat them as you will <laughs> Uh, hopefully you treat them well. That is my advice. All right. I hope you all found that helpful. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Uh, and sayonara. <laughs>